Welcome to the April 27, 2022 meeting of Local Agency Formation Commission, County of Kern, State of California. And we'll go ahead and begin with the roll call. Commissioner Couch? Here. Commissioner Crump? Commissioner Crump? Here. Commissioner Fowler? Here. Commissioner McKibben? Here. Commissioner Morris? Here. Commissioner Parlier? Here. Commissioner Sanders? Here. Commissioner Scribner? Here. Commissioner Zaragoza? Here. Thank you. Um, Mr. McKibben, would you lead us in the pledge, please? Please follow me in the pledge for our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, we'll talk now about the teleconference meeting requirements. Discussion and possible minute action, meeting protocol, a motion to hold the board meeting by teleconference pursuant to Assembly Bill 361 and Government Code Section 54953E and finding that there is a proclaimed state of emergency in the state that state and local official have recommended measures to promote social distancing all is required by AB 361 and Section 54953E. Um, Mr. Knox? Yes. Beginning January 1st, the passage of AB 361 requires that funding of a state of emergency, the findings of a state of emergency, and local officials' recommendation of social distancing is necessary to hold the meeting by teleconference. The Commission must approve these findings in order for the meeting to move forward. It's my recommendation to approve findings of a state of emergency and local officials have recorded measures to promote social distancing as per the requirements of AB 361. Is there public comment on this item? Are, are there questions or comments from the Commission? I need a motion for this item to proceed. Motion. Second. Yes. That was Commissioner Couch and Commissioner Scrivener. Could we have the vote, please? Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Crump? <coughs> Commissioner Fowler? Yay. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Morris? Yes. Commissioner Perlier? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Scribner? Aye. Commissioner Zaragoza? Yes. All ayes. Motion passes. Thank you. Next order of business is approval of the minutes. Uh, the, we have two approvals to do. The first is the March 23rd, 2022 meeting. We also need a vote. Is there a public comment? Commission comments or questions or corrections for the minutes? Move approval. Uh, I had a question. Oh, Commissioner Zaragoza? Proceed. Sorry, thank you. Uh, right. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking this is for March 23rd? Yes, the yeah. first meeting, not the closed session. Oh, great. Yeah, you mentioned two. You know, I, mentioned, <laughs> I got the two confused. I forget, it was two meetings in one. Um, on the question of, uh, I believe it's item, uh, agenda item 6B, the preliminary budget. Um, I believe I did ask a question about PERS unfunded liability payment, which was satisfactorily explained, and that, that was good. But I also mentioned a question about California LAFCO dues, and I, I thought that should be noted in the minutes. Okay. We can make an amendment. Thank you. Appreciate it. I, I think uh, Commissioner Scribner has to amend his. Certainly, I'll, I'll, I'll motion um, with that amendment. We need a second. second for that friendly amendment. Commissioner Couch, all those in favor? <coughs> Aye. 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 I'm sorry, I forget. <laughs> I'm trying to move this along. Go ahead, <laughs> Madam Clerk. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Crump? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Okay. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Morris? Yes. Commissioner Parlier? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. 
Commissioner Scribner. Aye. Commissioner Zaragoza. Yes. All ayes, motion passes. Thank you. Now we need approval for the second meeting minutes of that March 23rd meeting. It was a special meeting. Is there a comment from the public on that? Or comments or questions or corrections from the commission? I'll entertain a motion. Motion. Commissioner Couch, second. Motion to second. Zaragoza. Zaragoza, second. Madam Clerk. Commissioner Couch. Yes. Commissioner Crump. Yes. Commissioner Fowler. Yes. Commissioner McKibben. Yes. Commissioner Morris. Yes. Commissioner Parlier. Yes. Commissioner Sanders. Yes. Commissioner Scribner. Aye. Commissioner Zaragoza. Yes. All eyes, motion passes. Thank you. We're at item five, public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons desiring to address the commission on any matter not on this agenda and over which the commission has jurisdiction. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record before making your presentation. Mr. Rice, do we have anyone on the phone or on Zoom? Do we have anyone present who would like to make a comment? All right, we'll go on to uh, number six on our agenda. Notice public hearings. At the request of the executive officer, we will combine the two Rosedale Rio Bravo storage district proceedings, which are 6A and 8B, into one presentation with two votes. One vote for the annexation and one vote for the sphere of influence amendment. So I'm going to read the one applying to the annexation okay. first. Madam Chair, excuse me. Um, I'm going to recuse myself on this item because of the restriction on campaign contributions from one of the property owners. So I'll um, come back when we get to item 6B. Thank you. Thank you. So we're going to 8B first, which is 1802 Rosedale Rio Bravo Water District uh, proposal. And we do require a vote on this. Uh, but we'll hear the second part first. This proposal is to annex approximately 494, I'm trying to read that number. Somebody left off a zero. 494, help me, 0.6 acres of land consisting of three parcels. Parcel A is south of Stockdale Highway and east of Enos Lane. Parcel B and C are south of 7th Standard Road and generally east of Enos Lane. This annexation was initiated by the district for the purpose of providing ag water to these parcels. The surrounding properties are agricultural, rural residential, and open ground. This proposal has 100% landowner consent. The application or applicant has requested that notice, hearing, and protest hearing be waived. And then we're going to go ahead and read the second part, which is uh, 1794 Rosedale Rio Bravo water, water Storage District proposal. This is a sphere of influence amendment. Consideration of the proposed sphere of influence amendment to encompass the area presented in the corresponding annexation area, which is proceeding 1802, for approval as required by government code section 56428, CEQA Notice of Exemption. Mr. Knox, could we hear your report? Thank you, Chair. Formed in 1959, this is the first annexation for the Rosedale Rio Bravo Water, Water Storage District. So, so welcome to the club. Uh, this annexation takes in three agricultural properties equaling 494.6 acres that will be used for water recharge purposes. The proposed annexation goes outside their sphere of influence, which is coterminous with their boundary. Therefore, the sphere of influence amendment is necessary to conf uh, conform to the district's boundaries. This annexation is consistent with the general plan, regional transportation plan, or specific plan. There is no ag land, ag land conversion. It is consistent with commission policies. It conforms to the assessor's parcels. We have an indemnification agreement with the district. There is no functional overlap. 
Notice of exemption has been adopted by the applicant to meet CEQA requirements. No property tax are going to this district, so there's no tax exchange, and we have 100% consent. So I will make two recommendations. The first on the, um, let me get this right. The, the first is on the sphere of influence, and the second is on the annexation itself. So my first recommendation is that the commission consider the environmental document prepared by the district and approve the sphere of influence amendment to Rosedale Rio Bravo Water Storage District with conditions recommend, recommended by the executive officer. And my second recommendation is to recommend that the commission consider the notice of exemption adopted by the district and approve the proposed annexation contingent on approval of the sphere of influence amendment with conditions recommended by the executive officer, waiving notice, hearing, and protest hearing as requested by the applicant. Thank you. Is there public comment on either of those items? Are there commission questions or comments? Anyone on the phone or on Zoom with a comment? All right. Um, then let's have a motion first uh, for Annexation 1802. Annexation or the sphere? The annexation. Did you want the sphere first? Sphere. We'll do the sphere first, okay, which is Sorry. 1794. Thank you, Commissioner Couch. Motion by Zaragoza, second. And Zaragoza, second. Thank you. Are there additional questions by the commission? May we have the vote? Commissioner Couch? Yes. Yay. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Morris? Yes. Commissioner Parlier? But. Commissioner Parlier? Commissioner Sanders? Your laptop shut off. Let's take just a moment. We could talk Dodgers, but Commissioner Scrivener's out of the room.
Recording in progress. Barbara Fowler here. Do you need more than that? Nello is not here. Oh. Well, she's alternate commissioner. Ginger, could you speak, please? They're doing an audio check. Ginger, could you unmute, please? And... Tell us your name. And hear you now. Oh, there you are. Are we good? We're ready to roll. Thank you, Ginger. You're welcome. Now we have them up on screen. He's lost a couple of commissioners. We still have a quorum. So we can finish this vote, and uh, hopefully they rejoin us and keep keep moving forward. Do you remember where we were? I do. Okay. All right. We just completed the vote on the sphere of influence amendment for Rio Bravo, and now we're going to go to 8B, which is the annexation Rio Bravo, Rosedale Rio Bravo annexation number one. Excuse me, Barbara. Oh. Yes. I need to finish taking. Oh, that's right. We I'm lost sorry. that. Stopped right in the middle. <laughs> Could you cut that part out of the tape? <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Couch. 
Yes. Commissioner Crump. Commissioner Fowler. Yes. Commissioner McKibben. Yes. Commissioner Morris. Yes. Commissioner Parlier. Commissioner Sanders. Commissioner Scribner. Commissioner Zaragoza. Yes. Commissioner Scribner is recused. Yes. Right. Yes. Um, Commissioner Crump and Commissioner Sanders and Commissioner Parlier have less left the meeting at this point. The rest were all ayes. Motion passes. Thank you. So now let's go ahead with the other part of the Rio Bravo uh, issue. Re Rosedale Rio Bravo annexation number one, item 1802. We need a motion. A move approval. Uh, could I just ask that the executive officer restate the motion? I think there's three parts to that motion, right? There's three parts. Uh, a, B, and C. Because I, I was writing down everything. I got A and B. One was A is notice of exemption, adoption, annexation, approval, and something else you had mentioned. Um, well, well, the first recommendation is on, I believe, on the sphere of influence amendment, right, well, which requires a, which requires a CEQA document. And then you have to also consider a CEQA document for the annexation. Right, that's part A. Part B was to approve the annexation. And then there's a part C. Um, contingent on the approval of the sphere of influence amendment with conditions recommended by the executive officer waiving notice, hearing, and yeah, protest waiving hearing. Notice. Okay, waiving notice. Because okay. we have 100% consent on this. Okay, that was the part I missed. Okay. So we have a motion from Commissioner Couch, and we're waiting for a second. I'll second. Thank you, Commissioner Morris. Any other questions or concerns? Could we have the roll call vote? Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Morris? Yes. Commissioners, well, Commissioner Zaragoza? Yes. All eyes motion passes. Thank you. Now we'll go down to our final budget proposal for 2022 and 2023. Yes. We will need a vote on this item. Can we have uh, Commissioner Scribner back? Yes. <laughs> Welcome back. Consideration of the 2022-2023 proposed final budget. The budget for Kern Lafco is determined by the commission and funded by the County of Kern, the incorporated cities in Kern County, and the independent special districts that Kern Lafco has de designated as principal county with each category of agency paying one-third of the budget per Government Code Section 56381B1A. Mr. Knox. At the March meeting of this commission, there was an approval of the preliminary 2022-2023 budget. What I bring back you to, to you today is almost entirely the same with just two exceptions. Uh, there was a reduction in the workers' compensation of $2,000 and $1,200 less of the general liability insurance. As discussed last month, CalPERS and unfunded liability should have been reduced with the addition of $20,000 paid in during last fiscal year. I requested a revised report, uh, actuarial report, but have not received it yet. When I discussed this with the CalPERS actuarial himself, he indicated there would be a reduction by just a couple hundred dollars. So there's not a significant uh, change at this point. Uh, if there are any items, line items in the budget that you would like me to go through again, please let me know, but I'm going to keep moving on. Uh, a question was asked at last meeting about CalAFCO dues. I have confirmed that the due structure was not changed, uh, so we, they would continue to, to have tripled our, our dues. Um, last week, I also received a phone call from the chair of the board of directors of CalAFCO ask if we would consider rejoining. I asked again if there was a modification of the due structure, and the response was uh, uh, no, but if you have any suggestions on how to revise the structure, we'd be happy to look. So I made a suggestion to reconsider a proposal put better forward by our friends at Tulare County that would create a, a separate tier for folks about our size, and there was not a positive response to that. Um, CalAFCO is not completely off, our, our li off limits to us. We can, we can attend their conferences as non-members. It's a little more expensive per attendee, but, signific but still significantly less than paying for the full dues. I am considering sending Ms. Menchaca 
to to the fall conference. Uh, it would be good for her to, to learn uh, some of the LAFCO one-on-one -on -one and some of the other uh, excellent uh, presentations they make there. It would also be good for new, new commissioners. So, uh, so is my recommendation to approve the 2022-2023 final budget as presented with a 25% carryover from the 2021-2022 fiscal year uh, uh, to pay down the CalPERS unfunded liability. Uh, are there members of the public who would wish to comment on the budget? Do we have anyone on Zoom or on the phone who would like to comment? No. no. Uh, are there questions from the commissioners? Madam Chair, I'll move approval. Thank you. Okay, we have Commissioner Scribner, motion. Commissioner Couch, second. Any final questions or concerns? Could we have that roll call vote, please? Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Morris? Yes. Commissioner Scribner? Aye. Commissioner Zaragoza? Yes. All ayes motion passes. Thank you. Our next category is determination proceeding. And Mr. Schroeder, do you have something to tell us? Yes. Uh, I'm going to recuse myself on the McFarland annexation. When I was a city attorney there, I, I worked preliminarily on the beginnings of that annexation. I think it would be better to recuse myself. So we're at, we're at item 1788, City of McFarland proposal continued. We will have a vote at the end. The proposal is to annex approximately 2,138 acres of land generally located west of 99 Hanawalt Road going south to Whistler Road, Garzoli Road going east to 99 Freeway. The lands east of 99 Freeway, Sherwood Avenue going south to Whistler Road, and 99 Freeway going east to Driver Road. This annexation was initiated by the city for the purpose of future development. The surrounding properties are agricultural land, including two dairies and numerous agricultural ponds and scattered rural residences. The proposal has 100% landowner consent. Mr. Knox, your report, please. Okay. I'm happy to start this report and recommendation with news that there is an agreement between the City of McFarland and the Rec and Park District on park impact fees. As such, the Rec and Park District has removed its request to continue this item. The Commission can now move forward with your consideration uh, at this time. LAFCO staff uh, takes pride in bringing clean and tidy annexations to the Commission where all the issues align and the Commission's decisions are pretty easy. This annexation is not one of those. Um, my recommendation is for the Commission to, to approve a portion of the nearly 2,200 acres that the City is requesting to be annexed. There are several factors that I took into consideration that I want to share with the Commission so they have a full picture of what has transpired. Relevant to this proceeding, additional information has been received since the annexation was first brought to the Commission in January. That has allowed me to expand on my original recommendation, which was, a, which was significantly smaller. In the packet was the original report and recommendation from January plus two addendums, one from February and one for today. Together they tell the story of how we got here. The origins of this annexation go back to my first days at LAFCO five years ago meeting with the late city manager, John Wooner, about his plans for McFarland. Since that time, the city has gone through, I think, a half a dozen city managers and several staff changes, each with their own ideas about how this annexation should move forward. I have to say the city staff has been diligent in providing LAFCO detailed information on multiple issues, and I appreciate their professionalism and desire to create a better McFarland. Mr. Rice, please put up the map of the proposed annexation on the screen. Excellent. As presented, this annexation would more than double the size of McFarland. There are several different factors to consider as to whether this, this, this size and scope of annexation is appropriate at this time. Uh, quickly becoming a, a big issue is the long-term availability, availability of water that is a threat to the viability and growth of many Kern County cities above our shrinking water table. Water is provided to properties throughout the city based on 100% groundwater wells. 
The city does not have a groundwater sustainability plan, but the land included in this annexation is part of the GSP for Southern San Joaquin Valley Municipal Utility District. I requested the district prepare a letter indicating whether proposed uses of these lands would be consistent with the requirements of the GSP. The response by the Municipal Dis Utility District is supportive of the city's updated general plan and included in this packet. One thing that's been theme that's been consistent with all of the city managers and staff is the need for the city to focus on commercial industrial development. The city has financial difficulty difficulties for several years that have been detrimental to the city's ability to provide municipal services. A current example of this is the city's fire services. Since the original report and recommendation went out, we have received a copy of a new six-year fire agreement between McFarland and the county. Each year of the contract sees a gradual decrease in the subsidy until the sixth year where there's full reimbursement to the county. To afford, to afford that without compromising other services, the tax base of the city needs significant improvement. As a general rule, a healthy tax base does not come from residential development, but rather commercial and industrial operations. A logical place to put these commercial and industrial uh, is near freeways and railroad access. This annexation proposed McFarland grows south towards Highway 989 and the Whistler intersection, specifically for commercial and industrial opportunities. Mr. Reisky, you put the zoning map on, on the screen, please. There you go. Uh, the zoning map shows the commercial, industrial, and manufacturing uses near Highway 99 with residential expanding out further from the highway both east and west. This is a traditional urban plan that is widely used around uh, interstates and, and major highways. Starting on the east side of Highway 99, properties consist mostly of dairies, grapes, and almond trees. The dairies have agreed to be annexed into the city. This would seem to be unusual. Why would a dairy want to be in a city? I have not spoken directly to the dairy owners, but I can surmise that this dairy is approaching the end of its lifespan on a piece of property. Over the life of a dairy, nitrates build up in the soil uh, to a point they become unhe unhealthy and there, there's a need to move to another location. There are grapes on the northeast corner of Highway 99 in Whistler, and there's freeway and railroad access, which makes this prime location for commercial industrial development and manufacturing. Uh, the, pr the property owner has in indicated their willingness to be annexed into the city. Mr. Rice, place the landowner consent map on the screen, please. Excellent. When the annexation first came to the commission in January, the city had not received 100% consent. Over time, that has changed. For instance, on the west side of Highway 99 are new almond trees that have been planted or will be planted soon. Almond trees typically are productive for 20 to 25 years. My original recommendation did not include this area partially based on the age of the trees and the fact that the owners had not indicated their desire to be in the city. Since the January meeting, the city has received landowner consent on these properties immediately west of Highway 99. I have updated my recommendation to include these properties nearest the highway and pre-zoned for highway commercial and commercial residential mixed use. LAFCO has approved three annexations in the last couple of years, all of which were pre-zoned for residential. Coupled with a significant amount of vacant, vacant properties within the current city limits, shows there's ample room for residential growth. The pr proposed RENA numbers for the next eight years indicate a goal of 244 house, new housing units. Adjusted for income levels, that numbers drops between 81 and 162. There is not a problem with their current inventory of land zoned for residential to meet these RENA goals. The addition of mixed-use pre-zoned properties in the revised recommendation provides additional opportunities for residential while still focusing on commercial and industrial. Mr. Rice, can we have the Williamson Act uh, map? Okay. The preservation of farmland is one of the primary responsibilities of LAFCO. The very beginning of the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Acts makes clear the state's intention in regard to prime farmland. Government Code Section 56001 states, the le state legisl legislature recognizes that the logical formation and the de determination of local agency boundaries 
is an important factor in promoting orderly development and balancing that development with sometimes competing state interests of discouraging urban sprawl, pres preserving open space and prime agricultural land, and efficiently extending government services. McFarland is completely surrounded by prime farmland. How do we reconcile the need for additional growth while, pr while protecting this farmland? As the code section indicates, we are trying to, to bring a balance. To make it more complicated, the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act, SIGMA, will be requiring farmland to be furloughed to stabilize the water table. Are we to protect farmland that won't be farmed? It's too early in the SIGMA process to, to know which properties are going to be furloughed and which ones aren't. So we're put in a position where we have to do pr protect these lands as if they're going to be continue to be farmed. The city, at our request, has updated their general plan with the inclusion of an ag element allowing them to take property zoned agriculture into, agriculture into their city limits. This allows the city to take over the Williamson Act contracts from the county on these properties. The city indicates they're willing to take on these contracts, but the long range plan is to take these properties out of agriculture, agricultural uses as seen on the city's pre-zoning. This uh, annexation is consistent with the general plan, regional, tr regional transportation plans or specific, uh, specific plans. There is uh, uh, going to be ag land conversion. As proposed, the annexation is inconsistent with commission policies on farmland policy. The open space elements of our procedure standards and policies states, the commission will attempt to guide the provisions of government services and develop into areas other than those classified as prime agricultural lands as defined in section 56064 and 56016 of the government code, except when such development would promote the planned, orally, and efficient development of that area. According to the assessor, the boundaries uh, follow assessor parcel lines, but part of the proposed annexation was found to already be in the city of McFarland boundaries and was therefore excluded from the analysis. The city has provided an indemnification agreement. There is functional overlap for water and park services. Both the Reckon Park District and Southern San Joaquin Municipal Utility District have been integral in providing information for this proceeding. A notice of exemption has been adopted by the applicant. This is, an, this, this is an important place to note that the city does not have specific projects that are in the works. This annexation is speculation on future development. The city has a current tax split agreement with the county that's effective for this annexation. And when this annexation was first came to the commission in January, the city had not gained 100% consent within the area that I recommend, uh, that I, let me back that up. They had con uh, brought 100% consent within the area that I recommended, but had not garnered 100% for the entire proposal. Since that time, they have received consent from all of the landowners, uh, both within my recommendation and within the full, full annexation uh, proceeding request. Uh, as such, the city has requested that notice hearing and protest hearing be waived. Uh, Mr. Reisky placed my recommendation on the board. Effective and overlapping agencies and districts were notified. Information provided was included in the report and recommendation. The process required by the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act has been followed, including notices to affected agencies and any notices and publications required by law. To summarize, uh, although there, have been there has been inconsistency of leadership, the city of McFarland is moving forward in an attempt to provide a, a better quality of services to the residents and landowners. Their justification for development of commercial and industrial properties, especially near Highway 99 and railroad access, is solid. The justification for taking in a significant amount of farmland for residential development does not rise to the level of inclusion at this time. I have focused the recommendation on the commercial and industrial, excluding much of the pre-zone residential while finding a way down to Whistler and Highway 99, which has been a priority for them. The commission should, re it's my recommendation, the commission should review and consider the environmental document adopted by the applicant. It is further recommended that the commission approve annexation 1788 to the city of McFarland, uh, annexation 18 as modified by the executive officer. 
waiving notice hearing and protest hearing and subject to the conditions recommended by the executive officer. Uh, at this time, because my recommendation does not take the entire area proposed by the city, McFarland staff has requested some time to make their pitch of why this full annexation should be approved. With the chair's permission, I would like to ask the city to make their presentation now. Others who are interested in addressing the commission, uh, there will be time to make uh, uh, your thoughts heard during um, public comments. City? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Good evening, everyone. I would like to start off by introducing myself. Uh, I am Saul Ayon, a council member out of the city of McFarland. As an elected official and the one of the leaders of this community, the, st the stability is there now. I can't say for the past. Um, for the city of McFarland, I would like to express the importance of this annexation, what it means to the city of McFarland. This annexation is potentially the beginning of, this, of the city plans of stability and economic prosperity. Although the city is in, in the process of res residential growth, the sustainability of the city economically supported by the businesses through commercial and industrial zoning, the proposed annexation is without in doubt the most important factor of the future of our city. For the, for the good of our community, I hope the city is giving the permission to expand and, and prosper at this time. I would like to introduce our city manager and let them offer some, uh, some insight to this annexation. Um, Kenny Williams. Good evening, everybody. Thank you, Honorable uh, Board Members, for hearing us again in this uh, particular uh, item. Uh, my name is Kenny Williams, as uh, Mr. Oyon indicated. I'm a city manager of the city of Mar McFarland. And I'd like to start by saying thank you for all of you for hearing this uh, for several different times. I know it's been on your agenda uh, several times, and I know that can be a bearing way, have a bearing on you and a weight on you. So I appreciate you having the patience to deal with it. So um, I'd like to take the time to convey uh, our sincere belief that uh, if done properly, uh, this annexation is by far the most important uh, ingredient to assuring the economic stability in our small community. Um, as you know, we struggle. Uh, we have our financial difficulties, and this is part of getting us where we need to be as far as a community and being able to provide the services to our uh, small residents there. Um, the city has signed a contract with the Kern County Fire Department, uh, as you mentioned, Mr. Knox, and um, over the course of about five years, uh, it increases substantially uh, to the point that, uh, you know, right now it's an unfunded liability. And uh, that's something that we are trying to figure out a method to sustain that. In addition, um, I'm sure that many of you are aware of the history of the police department in McFarland and the struggles we've had there to maintain a full police force. Uh, there was a period of time that the city had a police force uh, that was part-time. And uh, that's not a way to run a public safety agency uh, where you respond from on call status to an emergency. Fortunately, we've been able to get through that and the police department now has a full 24-hour police department uh, to provide to the residents. But we still tr struggle, and that still is an economical concern uh, for us to provide those basic levels of service to our residents. Um, and what we're hoping is that, if done correctly, that this uh, annexation will provide that ability to uh, keep a good public safety service and provide the other uh, items to our residents. Um, but right now, it is still a struggle. So as you know, this an annexation is bifurcated by uh, Highway 99. That's so, why it's so attractive to us. Allows us to attract both northbound and southbound lane for industrial and commercial. Uh, however, there are some components of residents uh, that are important to this plan. Because as you know, this is a circle. Uh, some of those residents uh, that we could bring in could also help support the commercial and industrial property uh, that we want to bring in this annexation. So if you have a restaurant that comes in, uh, many times those residents that we would add to it would help support those restaurants as well. And so with that, um, I thank you so much for allowing us the opportunity to come back and talk about this. Uh, but what we, we'd like to request is um, we appreciate your offer and uh, for us to move along with the annexation, allowing us to do that. But we would also like to ask that maybe you consider uh, the ability for us to allow 
um, maybe in addition for certainly the individuals that we have in the room tonight that own property in that area uh, that's not included in the recommendation. And so with that, I will call on our community development director to provide you more information on what that means. So thank you. Uh, good evening, uh, Chairman and, and Commissioners. Uh, my name is Larry Rock. I'm uh, born and raised in the city of Delano. I work really close in McFarland now. So I'm born and raised, kind of know everything around there, and it's good to see that the city is finally growing. Delano is growing, but McFarland is also growing, which is great. Uh, I'd like to start by thanking you, giving me the opportunity to speak tonight, uh, and also state our request on the annexation. Uh, the city of McFarland is in dire need of, for commercial and industrial that will help sustain the city. Um, the recommendation does show about half of the, the land out in our application on the east side of the 99, but it also shows only a third of the property on the west side of the 99. This recommendation is valid with the amount of land within our city limits, showing that there is residential with some previous annexations. Um, the status of those three annexations prior with the residential, one of them does have a full uh, two tracks, full 350 homes that is in the grading process and hopefully start uh, in August. One track was sold. Um, that previous owner was the one that annexed, sold it to a farmer, and has no intention of developing. And that's more closer to Elmo and Garzoli, which shows a big chunk of our land of residential zone available. And the last one is another farmer just north of our third track off of Taylor and Garzoli. That farmer has not been able to strike an agreement with multiple developers sent his way in the last five years. So I do see there's a lot of growth possibility in residential within the city, but it's kind of hard when the, the property owners are not willing to or haven't struck an agreement with multiple developers that came into the city. So it strikes a disadvantage for the city to grow. And through that, I would like to see that our recommendation is to include, we have two farmers here today speaking on, our, on our public comments. Um, one of them owns a, a big portion of the land going residential west of the recommendation. And I would like to see if we can add their property, including making these gentlemen happy. And also they have a uh, master plan going on at the moment to provide abilities for developers to come in and produce land. So I know there was a question about Williamson Mac land, but if the farmers here are making the suggestion that they want to develop, that kind of makes it an easier amount of justification of which farmland is coming out. Um, I know there was different uh, differences on what land to come out based on what the state regulations are coming down. But if farmers here are willing to develop, I would recommend that we not only go with the recommendation to our executive officer, Blair Knox, but also add these farmers who are here today showing the support for this annexation and it has the, mind, the mindset for the future development coming in the next few years. Thank you, and I also would like to introduce our city planner, Brianni De Leon. Would you mind spelling your last name for me? Ronk, R as in Robert, O as in Oscar, N as in Nancy, K as in Kite. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, commissioners. Good afternoon. My name is Brianni De Leon. I'm the city. I'm the city planner for the city of McFarland. I'm also a resident for the city of McFarland. So, housing need throughout California is a hot topic. Homes are almost impossible to find, and those that are available are at a high price. As a planner for the city of McFarland, I see that issue firsthand. I've had an increase in plans coming to my desk for ADUs and garage conversions because of the lack of la available land. I recently took a look into the regional housing needs allocation provided by Kern Cog and saw the numbers that HUD put together. What I found was that 66.6% .6 of the residential need of McFarland is higher income housing. The issue that continues to rise is the lack of available land. I believe the city is in dire need of commercial and industrial land in order to grow and sustain the city. But I, believe that I also believe that with these growing facilities comes a need for residential opportunities. I stand here today to counterpropose and Annexation 18 that also includes a residential between Mass Avenue and the 99 and the residential between Nil and Hanawal. I think it's important to note that as the city grows through commercial, the need for residential will grow as well and vice versa. The need for both to be implemented together is there. As we conversed with the landowners, we came to the conclusion that not only is the need there, but the desire to develop these projects is also present. Thank you. We'd like to thank you so much for allowing us to present. Uh, what I will say just real quickly is, um, you know, I'm, I'm also bound by the rules and regulations, and Mr. Knox, I know that's some of the things that you quoted there, and those are extremely important. 
but I also, uh, coming from a law enforcement background, I know that listening to the people and the residents and the concerns they have and coming and looking at some of the difficulties and struggles we have just with uh, providing a, a public safety but also our roads and those type of things is extremely important and that is dealing with people. And so when you deal with uh, the rules, regulations, we also have to listen to the people and what the people want. And certainly uh, these items are supported by the residents in our community and certainly by uh, the individuals that own the property there. So with that, I will let you have it. I think we have some public comment later from the actual individuals that own the property. So okay. thank you so much. Chair, you, you could have them now or you can have them during public comment. It isn't. I'd like to go ahead and have the members of the public who'd like to speak come forward. and. If you'd be real clear about saying your name and your last yes, name particularly. Uh, my name is Neil Mindrin with Millicidge Farming out of McFarland, also a resident. How do you say your last name? Mindrin, M-E-N-D-R-I-N. I just want to say, hey, we, we, we have about 400 acres on the east side of the town that's, that's in this annexation. Um, we totally support the city and the leadership that they have right now. It's great. We're like it's excited. It's developers keep calling, and the, the city needs it. You know, the city needs the growth. The people, it's a good community, and uh, we believe in the city. We, we do. So we'd like to see the whole annexation go in instead of the recommendation. That'd be nice. But um, I really don't know too much to say. <laughs> but we, we totally support them. So. I wonder if it would be possible for you to point out on the map where your oh, yes, property is located. Thank you. I was going to ask you to do that. Can I walk up here? Sure. So we have. Yeah, I could bring up the land on the map. There, there we go. go. The York Millis that gets on. Millis on here. And then we have this one right here. So approximately about 400 acres. And with the recommendation, it cuts us off just a little bit. Which we also have Mr. Visser has a consent. He would like to see that go in the city also. Can I ask a question? Yes, please. Uh, can you show us with your cursor? It look, it looks like in Mr. Knox's recommendation that the property nearest the, the freeway is already in it. Correct. Correct. And then the other, show me, uh, if you could, bud. Mm -hmm. Where's the other one? There's the one with my recommendation. That's what he's looking for. The map with my recommendation. Oh, the map with your recommendation? Yes. It's to the northeast, right? Correct. Just with for the recommendation. For you to hold on to this just for the sake of our. Oh, thank you. Oh, no problem. Oh, okay. Thank you. So the recommendation. There you go. It cuts it off right here. Our, our property line's up to this point right here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Other public speakers? Well, yeah, they asked for the whole hatched area, and Blair's recommending the orange part. You guys ready? Uh, I'm Ron McPherson. Uh, should I spell that? Yeah, it's me. <laughs> We go back a long way. We could tell stories, but uh, this is probably not the uh, venue for that. Um, I, I, I will just say one thing. Uh, back in the high schools, he was in, uh, I was at Highland High. He was BHS, right? And uh, we were in the, the city tournament. This is back. He was probably 16. I was 14. And uh, I got him first round in the, uh, the tennis tournament. And I worked hard, and I got four games off of him on the first um, on the first uh, set. Yeah, he beat me six four. And <laughs> the second set, he said, "No, nah, that's it. I'm done with you." And it was six zero. <laughs> but I was so happy to get four games off of you that one time. <laughs> so anyway, that's that's for for another uh, another time and event. Um, I work for Yakov Dulcich and Sons. Um, I've worked with them in a vendor capacity for about 30 years and I've been working with them as an employee for the last three, four years. It's, it's hard to remember some of these times. Um, we farm a total of about 6,300 acres uh, split between the Maricopa area, the Delano area, the McFarland area, and a little bit up in Tulare County. 
Uh, we have a lot of the VPNs that are in, uh, not VPNs, APNs, uh, that are um, that are in that proposal. Some of them are in the original, and some are in the expanded. Uh, do you want me to go over the, the list those, point them out? Or? Yes, please, if you would. Okay, I mean, so we, the APNs we have in this uh, are, uh, let's see, what would be the best way to do this? That's great. I have the map up if you want to. Okay, so I think I'm tall enough. Uh, so you were talking about 99 and what was in the original. This is us, 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 us. I think I said these top two here and then this uh, section here. So when you were talking about the commercial, it's, that's basically all of this area that was in that original proposal. So about the only thing that's not us is this little bit right there. So for us, that represents 804 acres within the, uh, within the expanded area. It's about 30%, 37% of, uh, of the areas. Um, when we first looked at it, one of our thoughts was is that, um, uh, I, I got a lot of notes here from this thing, um, that uh, when we looked at it, we thought that uh, uh, if the the city would be, um, oh, how would you call it, uh, uh, it would be more beneficial that if they expanded that area, and, that, and part of that was with our recommendation, uh, because it would be, we looked at it as that we have this strip of commercial and retail that's going to go along 99. Uh, one of the things that we would need is to uh, have uh, people supporting that and employment and servicing that area. And we were looking at uh, also within our uh, plans that we're developing is to develop uh, the housing in, uh, in the areas. I don't know if you have the topo, topo, uh, the satellite views, but what we're looking at is also developing housing on a lot of the properties. I'll bring this back over here. Um, so up in this area, we were looking at doing some like high density housing, some residential along here so that we provide, uh, I think what was the term, the rooftops or the housings that would help uh, support that area because uh, we have a lot of employees now that don't live in the area simply because nothing's there. So we're looking at that and uh, saying uh, that would be a good idea. And, you know, we looked at it and said, mind you, is that um, we're not looking at this as a land grab by the city of McFarland, but we're looking at it more as a, that they're looking through this through long-term lenses. And, and we see and see great opportunities for both uh, us land owners and potential developers that are looking in that area and can do some good things in the area. If you go back to the original annexation, uh, I think it's it's going to be cutting the legs out of the development and having a self-contained area uh, like in the uh, city of McFarland simply because you're not going to have places for the people to live to uh, to support any type of uh, residential, I'm, I'm sorry, not residential, uh, retail or uh, commercial in that area. Um, uh, I do want to point out a couple or give you some feedback to some of the statements that I believe it's Mr. Knox had mentioned. Correct. Uh, one with the, the Sigma, the Sigma requirements, I think that's going to be litigated for a long time. If, uh, it's going to be, uh, it's going to come down to who owns the water under the, under the, under the land. Is it California? or is it the landowners? And, and you're gonna have uh, quite a few lawsuits with it being, as, as a, is it a uh, uncompensated asset grab? You know, meaning it's saying, if they're saying that's our water, uh, we own it versus the uh, uh, landowner said, no, it's under our ground, we own it. I think that's gonna be lit litigated for a long period of time 
where um, if we wait for any type of resolution in that, you know, time is going to move on and pass over McFarland. Um, you also mentioned the almonds that we had recently planted down there at the corner of Whistler. And uh, sorry, I'm nervous trying to get this all out. So um, for, for those people, we're talking about this area, this area, this area, and this area that has been planted in almonds. This is a two-year, this is a, we just planted this area here. Well, one of the things is, is that we have a lot of land. We have plans for those almonds if this thing goes forward, is we can move those trees in their dormancy during the winter time up to about five years. I don't know if just like you see those uh, big olive trees they bring into the residential areas where they take the blades, boom, pull it up, take it, move it, drop it. We do that when it's uh, dormant. We can move them pretty much wherever we want. So I, I don't think that's much of a, um, uh, a factor as far as, you know, are we going to be there or not. Um, then the other thing I would disagree with you on is um, the, uh, the um, just recommending the area for the retail. Um, I, s I still see that we need to have the uh, support of, uh, of residential in the area, and we do have plans to do that, re uh, that residential. And if you end up uh, uh, just uh, limiting that to the original, not the expanded area, it's going to be, uh, I'm sorry, I'm getting a little nervous here. Uh, I mean, it's going to allow, it's going to make us start over on a lot of our plans and how we're going to rework and how, do, how we do our, self, our stuff. So um, I think um, for us as the landowners and as um, the long term for McFarland, I, I think the expanded uh, area is in the best interest of everybody. So again, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Question for you, yes, sir. sir. Um, yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. That's all right. <laughs> uh, the area to the east, that corner area, is any of that in the Williamson Act contract? I'm sorry. I'm not the the which act? The far right corner is we're looking at it at the map. Is that we, section we, that you said it, your company's section? We have a map with the Williamson Act on it. Okay. Yeah. Let me show you that. I'm interested in which of those properties have Williamson Act contracts. There you go. The ones in green. Our Williamson Act. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah, I think all the I, I think all the uh, land we have in that area is also under special district too. So. Okay. Uh, any other questions I can answer for you? I can do some more David Couch stories if you want. No, thank you. <laughs> so, okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that might not help you, sir. <laughs> Are there other public speakers? Do we have anyone on the phone or by Zoom who would like to comment? All right. All right. Are there questions or comments by the commission? I have a question. Is there anybody from the uh, Rack and Park District here? Oh, just curious. Thank you. Commissioners? Yes, ma'am. May I? Yes, please. Um, I have some comments and questions. First, I want to just say thank you to the city of McFarland for, um, I've worked with, I think, three uh, administrations and some different city council members and gotten to know them, and uh, I admire them. They're, um, they have the best interest of their city at heart, I believe, and I think they have put forward what they believe is the best plan for their city. Um, so I appreciate you, and I appreciate your comments tonight, and I, and I appreciate the, my old friend Ron and my, my new friend also being here tonight. Um, I have no economic interest with Ron, and I didn't know he was going to be here tonight. We've known each other since we were very, very young. Um, we talk about the Williamson Act plan for a second. That was a concern that, that you, you had. And also uh, water. Yes. Okay. Kind of at the same time. We'll talk about those. 
my understanding is when a property owner wants to take his, well, my understanding is first, Kern County is one of the last counties that actually still recognizes the Williamson. Or we've been we've been given the option by the state to continue to to recognize those lands or not, and we still do it. Correct. <clears throat> so it's not it's no longer the same statewide program that it really used to be. Some counties have opted out of it, and in, in its entirely. Some, I say some. We may be the only one that's left. I don't know. Um, are you aware? If we're the only ones, I, I know there's very few. If if there are, but I don't know if we are the only one. Okay. But I, do, I know it's pretty rare at this point. So, if we had opted out, would that be a decision? If we had opted to not be involved in the Williamson Act anymore, that wouldn't be a consideration. Of it, would still, it would still it would still be considered prime prime farmland. Good. I want to talk about prime farmland okay. because <laughs> I've had some experience in the last five or ten years about prime farmland, and prime farmland is what is designated on a map by the state of California. And I can drive you around Kern County and show you what has been designated as prime farmland that sure don't look like it and they're Desert. not growing anything on it. <laughs> and uh, I don't know how it got designated that. So I used to think of prime farmland differently than I do now because prime farmland to me means it's rich soil, it's, it's a good place to grow just about anything and something is probably being grown on it. And there are multiple places in Kern County where it's designated as prime farmland, but it's that's not happening. Um, I don't know if that applies here or not, but I just want to make, make the case that prime farmland, as I've come to understand it, is not quite what I thought it was. Um, and I think, in response to your to your comment, Mr. Knox, I don't want to, I'm not trying to tell you you're wrong or, or debate you, but here's a different thought on it. And that's um, Sigma is going to cause a lot of landowners and farmers to do exactly what I think is being proposed here. They're going to have to look at their land. They're going to have to look at what kind of crops they can grow. They're going to have to look at the water availability that they have and what it costs. And they're going to have to make a, an economic decision whether or not that even makes sense for them anymore. And if it doesn't, they're going to have to do something else with it, which typically is going to be residential, commercial, or industrial development, solar, who knows what it's going to be, wind. Um, so I'm not as concerned, I'll be careful how I say this, I'm not as concerned about the annexation of prime farmland or land that's in the Williamson Act because the, the landowner is going to have to pay to come out of the Williamson Act. I think he goes through a process, he would go through a process at the city where it annexed, right, mm -hmm. to do that. Um, and as far as, as far as the water goes, that's another decision they just have to, they just have to make on their own. Um, how do you feel, Mr. Knox, about at least adding the property owned by the, owned or controlled by the, the two gentlemen that that spoke here tonight. You have 100% landowner approval, right, of everything that, that was applied for by the city of Wasco. Correct. I'm inclined to do that, but how do you how do you feel at least about going and including the land that was spoken spoken about this evening? So two things you, you mentioned their their control over water, which is as he pointed out, going to be in courts of who, who actually owns it and who has responsibility of determining uh, how much water you can pull out at some point. Uh, so there, there's that piece. I should also say that from where I'm sitting, I have to be pretty strict with, where I, wh with what I'm recommending. U.S. commissioners have more flexibility than I do. Okay. Does that, does that answer your question? Well, yes, it does. Um, if you want to add to that, I don't want to interrupt you, but if, if, you, if that's all you need to... I serve with the pleasure... I'm picking the, up what you're putting down. I, I serve with the pleasure of the commission. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> well, um, commissioners, I would like to ask you to consider approving what McFarland asked for, the full amount of what they, of what they asked for, 
for a, for a multitude of reasons, but I'll start with this. One, it's, there's 100% landowner consent. Um, in the past, we have annexed, I don't know if it was prime farmland, but it's land that is still in agricultural production into a city, and it wasn't the city of Bakersfield, and it continues. There may be some in the city of Bakersfield, but I, I can assure you that there is some in another city. It continues to this day. Um, was that a wise decision or not? I don't know, but we used, I guess we used our discretion um, mm -hmm. in that decision uh, as well. And I, it's my belief that the private sector, just like they're recommending right now, or just like they're asking for right now, is gonna work out some of these Water, Sigma, Williamson Act issues over time, um, which there's processes they have to go through, but um, us sitting back here saying we know what's best for how you're going to, um, what you're going to do with your land, I think we, we need to be careful about how we, how we treat that. So my recommendation and my motion would be that we approve the city of McFarland's application, which was what was up there in yellow, which had 100% landowner consent. And let's see where that goes before we go any further. Thank you for your motion. Um, I'll hear a second, or we can continue the discussion and leave the motion hanging for a minute while we discuss it. Are there other comments from the commission? How hard is it to annex at a later time if we annex this piece of land, you know, now? And we do that on a regular basis, and we have had that conversation with the city that when they do have specific projects that are ready to go, we, we can always bring it back to the commission. Uh, these days, if it's a pretty simple annexation, it's about a six-month process. We had it down to three months, but with COVID and people missing from departments around the county and, and cities, um, it's taking longer. Um, but. On their behalf, knowing that it's in the city takes that just that one more step out of the out of the process, that one more uncertainty of whether this commission will say yay or nay. At the same time, though, you're also trying to do your job of protecting farmland as required by the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act, and like it says in the act, it's your it's your job to balance. <laughs> Hope that wasn't towards me. Um, <laughs> or David. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. <laughs> yeah, yes, and so we do have a responsibility to, to, to try to do those protections, but it also says to try to balance them with the growth and orderly growth of a city. And that's what you're, as a commission here, to, to, to make a decision on. Commissioner Morris, did you have another question? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just concerned that the land will sit there like for 10 years with nothing, you know, no projects going. And Even if it goes in the city, it can still be farmed. Even if it's pre-zoned for manufacturing commercial industrial. So it doesn't stop farming from happening. Can I say something? Yes, yeah, please, uh, Mr. I, I have a series of questions, and I don't know. I can I can vote on uh, Supervisor's Couch's uh, initial, but I'll probably vote no. I just have um, there's a lot of questions that have now been answered, so I just want to let you know where I'm, where I'm coming from. Okay. Hello. Commissioner yeah. Scribner. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have a question of, um, re in regards to the Williamson Act. Um, when the state canceled the program, the county's been backfilling the reduction in property taxes. And so I think the city, um, I believe it was the city manager, I'm not 100% sure who it was, uh, mentioned that they would continue the Williamson Act, Williamson Act. And so what implications would there be on those farmers that right now are enjoying a, um, a reduction in, in tax from the county? What would happen if they are annexed 
are there any implications on them as far as taxes, et cetera? So I, I know there's landowner consent, and so I'm 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 curious as to you know to how that is going to work for them if we would approve the full annexation. So th the city uh, recently did an update of their general plan that included an ag element that allows them to take Williamson Act within their city. Before that, they didn't have that. So the only one who could change that Williamson Act would be the city. And of course, if the property owner says we're ready to be out of it, they'd have to pay their way out for the, the, the additional years they have left to the end of their contract. I think that's the way that works. Um, so I, I, technically, the county told the city, if you're going to take this, these, William, these properties in that has a Williamson Act, you have to take your planning department told them they have to take these Williamson Act. It, it won't stay in the county. Um, so that's how, how we got here. Thank you. Appreciate that. Mr. Knox, just for the record, could you define prime ag? I don't have that in front of me. Um, it can be law, uh, land that does not appear to be fertile but is fertile. It can be fallow land that may be fertile. You don't make a judgment by the way it looks. Is that correct, or am I mistaken? I, I believe uh, Commissioner Couch is right. Um, it is a list that's put together by the state of California, mm -hmm. and I think property owners at some point designated their land as prime farmland, and it was put on the list that way okay. because they want protection or some other, other reason for doing that. Okay. Uh, to take it off, I think there has to be a request of someone to, to remove it so you may have properties that 30 years ago were farmed here uh, and have been fallow since and could be completely desert but they're still designated as prime farmland thank you do we have anyone on the phone or by zoom who would like to comment all right we have a motion on the floor um, and we're waiting a second or the motion dies. Uh, this is Crump. I'll second it. Thank you, Commissioner Crump. Uh, any final comments by anyone? Well, yeah, Commissioner Zaragoza, you had questions. Oh. I mean, if you want to ask them before we vote, oh, thank you, I, I want thank you. I appreciate you it. Yeah. First of all, I appreciate your comments, uh, especially being a supervisor you would have a better understanding of what's going on countywide on the on prime farmland but I be, believe the Department of Conservation has a de definition on prime farmland and uh, it's pretty scientific it's just not a put your name on a list I think they have a very good uh, scientific uh, threshold how to do that uh, first of all uh, some notes is that uh, I wanted to thank uh, the city of McFarland and uh, the Park and Recreation District um, for their developer agreement as far as uh, 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 the fees and how they're going to be used to improve the park and whatnot. Um, I didn't quite understand where the park was going, but based on that map, have you decided where it's going or is that still up in the air? I can find that sure. Chairman and commissioners, it's actually in one of the annexations that was shown on our maps as a residential zone. It's actually in our very first track, right on the uh, not right on the corner of Taylor and Garzoli, and McFarland. is It is across from Horizon School, but down further on on Taylor Avenue. So it's in the middle of the two tracks that's set on one of the annexations. And how many done previously. how many acres was that? I'm sorry. I believe the parks is 2.2 .2 acres. Okay, all right. Uh, that's first question I appreciate that um, this is not a question but an observation did did we in the commissioners packet get a copy of your revised uh, reduction of farmland I, I didn't see that map until now <laughs> the first time I've seen it uh, for the there should have been well you don't receive one in your application I do run one when I do the analysis yeah. so I look at whether so let me ask on. staff a question the proposal that was provided or recommended from the uh, city of McFarland was um, I'm going to run it off I believe it was 2100 acres of land what 
what is the net re what is the now the new the new recommendation? How many acres of land? Yes, that's one. The, that's the full. That's the full. I just want to know what staff was recommending, because I I didn't see that. I, I, I'm reading your the recommendation memo, but it didn't give me a, a number, and I didn't see the map. So that's why I'm a little bit uncertain as to how to vote. Yes, the recommended area is 882.5 acres. The say that again. I'm sorry. 882.5 acres. It's up on the screen right now. Okay. All right. Now I have a better understanding what what's going on here. So that's 2100. Okay, and uh, so that's about 40 percent. Current city uh, is 9, 1,926 acres. So it's less than half what, what, what they want. Okay. Yes, okay. Uh, what they propose, yes. Okay. Uh, another question. Um, the, um, the recommended map that's from the city of McFarland um, on the um, – it's interesting to know that your your recommendations of the uh, annexation plus the uh, development is surrounded by prime land, prime land, or is it not? The question is, and I can uh, I will make the assumption that the land that is surrounding your annexation is intensive production agricultural land. It is being farmed. And that's maybe a, a staff question or a farmer question. And if you could address that? And if so, what are the type of crops that are being farmed next to the annexed uh, proposal? Go ahead. Yeah, most of the farm around the city of McFarland, you're going to have almonds, you're going to have grapes, and I believe you'll also have, sometimes have hay or alfalfa. Those so, are the main ones surrounding, and our developers here uh, probably have some of the land that's also surrounding in those areas also doing more crops. Mr. Mr. Ronk, so the land, um, let's say near Whistler, Ro Whistler Road and Garzoli Avenue is either pistachios, almonds, or, almonds or, or grapes. Uh, grapes, and likewise, is that near uh, Driver Road as well? Correct. Which, okay. And it's being farmed. It's, Correct. It's a production. Okay. Yeah, on Driver and Whistler, um, the farmer is here. It was uh, Dulcich, um, Jacob. He actually has a 311 acres that's all mm -hmm. grapes. That's on the corner of uh, Whistler and Driver. Right. So the reason I'm asking is that I read the, uh, the General Plan Amendment EIR, and I was trying to research the air quality section, and it was very brief. <laughs> okay. I believe it was Michael Baker International that did the uh, environmental document. My concern is that when you develop R1 on the edge of the ag interface, did you talk to those farmers because they have to spray either pesticides or chemicals on their farmland? And Kern County has been known for far uh, pesticide drift. Have you ever thought about how that's going to affect your residential development that is next door to these intensively farmed Ag lands. I per we personally probably haven't, um, but the same issue would come around with all the all the cities in Kern County. Delano's doing the same thing. There's almond trees right beside new development, so the same affects all right, cities. Right, but, but those Kern proposals County. aren't coming before LAFCO. Correct, <laughs> and they ha they have before though. Uh, not when I was on the board, oh. so I have to commission. So yes, just let me know. Yes. So it's that being the case, uh, and I know you already approved the EIR, so it's a foregone conclusion. Correct. It's a done deal. But that was a question I'm, I just wanted to okay. know Thank how you, you responded to that because I know some communities put in buffers. They don't put R1 right adjacent to ag land, prime ag land. I'm just letting you know what you're saying is maybe happening, but it's not the way perhaps other communities in California are doing that. Yeah, right. just and giving you my personal opinion. Can I add some information to that? Sure, go ahead. In the AB 617 process, the the San Joaquin Valley Air Pollution Control District runs. Good, good, good point. <clears throat> um, that that, that uh, issue of pesticide drift and that sort of thing, especially with residential development adjacent, has been brought up. And the Air District doesn't really have juris doesn't really doesn't have jurisdiction there, mm -hmm. but it's gotten the attention of um, I don't know which department at the state, but there's an effort now. Um, 
There wasn't ever by the ag commissioners. Now Department there's Department of Pesticide Regulation. There you go. So there's there's because I was I was attending those AB six uh, six seventeen meetings and I'm so now there's an that. effort legislatively to come up with I have, I have that too. at least a notification process. Right. Okay. I wanted to interject that. I That's think that is very important. Okay. Yeah, and, and Shafter is one of two tentative uh, communities that have this grant funding available. The last time I looked at it, it was the millions of dollars that they can do. I didn't want to put McFarland in that category where they have to do another one because you're approving development right next to ag and there's pesticide issues or any kind of chemical, agro, ag chemical drift. So I'm just letting you know where I'm look how I see this. Yes, thank you. I appreciate that. And, and as a planner, you might want to consider that in the future, how you do development because buffering sometimes helps. You could put an open space some other type of uses there besides R1 next to ag. I'm just giving you some ideas that I've looked at in the past. I greatly okay. appreciate that. Okay. Uh, what's happening is I'm, um, hmm, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of glad to see two farmers here who have expressed their uh, proposals and how that would affect their development if it's not 100% annexed uh, proposals in the future. I'm inclined to, and I think David mentioned that initially, maybe to include their proposals in the revised map. Um, uh, um, um, but as far as the whole thing, I'm not sure yet. I, I want to open that up for discussion. If anybody else has any comments. I, I will, Madam Chair. Sure. Uh, if I may, um, thank you. Um, Mr. Knox, after listening to the discussion, hearing the presentations, um, the your recommendation is is about less than less than half of what they are requesting as far as the annexation is concerned. Correct. Um, can you summarize for us again the key points is, that led you to that decision to reduce what they've what they've requested? Just just so we have it one one more time, or I have it one more time. I want to speak for everybody else. Sure. Uh, I also want, we have a definition of prime farmland that was asked for, so let me read that here very quickly. All right. That gives me time to think of your, to answer Thank your you. question. Uh, irrigated land with the best combination of physical and chemical features able to sustain long-term production of agricultural crops. This land has a soil quality, growing seasons, and moisture supply needed to produce sustained high yields. That's the definition. Very interesting. Thank you. Yes. So the, um, as I mentioned, there's, there, there's a number of factors I was looking at. One being um, farmland uh, and, and, our, and our ability to protect prime farmland, which is, is something that we're at, you're asked to balance. Uh, whether they can provide the services to that area, uh, especially considering water. And we were able to get a letter from uh, Southern San Joaquin Municipal Utility District that says that this is consistent, this, their whole plan is consistent with their GSP. So it's not a, that's not a significant issue today. Um, I should also say that those GSPs have gotten comments back from the State Water Board that there's changes that need to be made. So this is a moving target. Uh, so you should be aware of that. Um, Williamson Act is also a consideration uh, for the most part even though they have a, a um, portion of their general plan that allows for Williamson Act to be in typically it needs to be in the county and it, it kind of goes to uh, Commissioner Zaragoza's comments about having some separation between ag land and uh, high density urban development um, I mean you're always going to have those rural residences out there that get sprayed all the time that that happens quite often um, I am going to look at back at my notes just to make sure I'm not missing something yeah I did I, the, the zoning uh, the ability to provide housing with the, with their current capacity uh, was a consideration uh, with the three annexations I, I believe that they have enough um, 
I, I can't be in a position of being a, a fortune teller and knowing when the right development's gonna come to the right farmer, mm -hmm. right property owner that's gonna, going to produce a development. A, so um, I felt like I have to, to go on the conservative side of that, that issue. So, so that's where I've gone. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the pieces that, um, and this is personal, um, I remember when the dairy went into McFarland in the 80s and how up in arms and everybody was. And that was at a time where if you had a piece of ag property, you could put dairy on it without a permit. It didn't make any difference how close the city you were and how, how far away you were. Uh, if you were, if, if it was zoned ag, you could put on there and not ask the county one thing. Um, it is a detriment to the, to the city to have that next to it and have that smell and those fumes coming off, off that property. Um, so I was very excited to, to, to say that's one of those pieces and that the fact that they've, at, they've got consent from them that says we need to come in tells me they're ready to move that, that dairy off. So that was a consideration of mine. That's getting a little close to saying um, we're, we're um, doing some land use planning on behalf of the city, and I understand that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not our job. <clears throat> but, it's, but you're also looking at the best health and best um, use of the properties uh, for the betterment of the city. And having a dairy away from the city will be mm -hmm. beneficial to them long term. And and lastly, I go back to the original um, conversation I had with City Manager Wooner. Uh, they were desperate for commercial industrial, and that's um, they specifically wanted to target those two corners on Whistler and 99 because they think that those are prime places to put manufacturing and commercial. Mm -hmm. So I really wanted to get down there and give them that without, without giving them more than they can, they can handle. Mm -hmm. So that, that's how I got here. Um, I'm trying to find, find a place within Cortese Knox and their principal acts for for um, the city and 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 folks trying to strike a balance I'm trying to strike a balance mm -hmm. um, like I said I, I, I kind of feel like I have to give you a conservative approach and if you want to expand past that that's up to the commercial to the to, to the Commission to do that I appreciate that thank you yeah. thank you for reiterating those points um, I think those are important points appreciate it thank you madam chair are there other comments from commissioners here? Or we have a public spokesman. Come on up. Hi again, Chair and Commissioners. Uh, to add to Mr. Knox, he's talking about that dairy that's along 99. There's also another dairy right by the school that he didn't add to it. It's located right there on Garzoli. That also has the, the smell, the fumes, and everything that's part of this annexation. Mm -hmm. So if we're talking about the, the benefit of, this, of, the, of the residents, we're also talking about the benefit of the students, you know, not smelling that. So I'm here as, as the elected official and say, yeah, um, we don't want the, the, the whole annexation, but, you know, in order for this city to prosper, we need to have this industry, we need to have this residential, we need to have the, the old saying, you know, the what's that terminology uh, rooftops and that concedes with with this at this annexation and I'm aware of Mr. Saragosa's comments as far as you know the ag and you know the buffer between residents and the crop but if you look at our county the majority besides the oil it's it's ag so we're we're fully aware, I'm fully aware of that and what we need is is this annexation to go through for what's best for this community. But thank you again. I'm here if you have any questions or concerns. I know last meeting they were asking for an elected official. I'm here to answer any questions. I've been a resident for close to 40 years. So thank you. 
And he'll be sitting up here next month. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it feels a little different when you're on this side. Yes, please continue. Hi there. I just want to follow up on uh, a couple of comments from Mr. Zar uh, Zaragoza. Did I get that right? I don't want to offend you by saying it wrong. Uh, <laughs> so, good. Um, can we pull up uh, the map real quick again? Uh, I guess the land landowner maps or something. I just want to point out that we are currently growing. Where are we at? Up here, we are growing grapes um, right now. And believe me, we have to do our notice of intents, and we have to do our spray programs, and we have to do everything, especially in these in this area here mainly because of the residential up here. And so we do change our, um, our spray programs. We do change the chemicals we use to be in compliance to that. So I, with uh, all of the new re regulations and requirements coming out, that, that is something that has been minimized over the years. Because I know uh, we have a lot of almonds over there. All of our um, uh, new developments that we're doing in the uh, in the trees the almonds and the pistachios we're all going organic with that and simply because it's more cost when you look at the cost benefit of being organic versus your inputs your inputs are going to be higher but your benefits on the end are uh, much better so anything we do there is going organic I assume everybody else is going to be doing that here because especially on almonds and on pistachios, it's a lot easier. And you know, on grapes, I, it's like difficult at best. You can ask Neil about his organic programs, but we've decided in the past it's just not benefit, it's not profitable to do grapes and organics. But I just want to let you know that we we do adhere to pesticide programs um, when we get close to uh, residential areas, and we do have some areas where we're close up on residentials. We change the mix up. We change the. Uh, we do our uh, notice of intents, and uh, we can pretty much coexist with that. Thank you. Thank you. Are there questions from anyone online or by phone? Mr. Couch, Commissioner Couch, would you uh, restate your motion for us, please? I also want to compliment. Yes, ma'am. I also want to compliment you on the fact that it is a very squared off. That's right. Annexation. Um, there's no peninsulas. There's no islands. There's none of that stuff that we sometimes have to talk about. So the motion was um, to approve. Is it? It's a sphere increase as well, right? No. No. The sphere goes out there already. It's only an annexation. Right. That butts up to their sphere at Whistler Road. Okay. The, the motion was to approve the annexation as requested by the city of McFarland as reflected on the map that is currently on the screen. Do I hear a second to that motion? Oh, Mr. Crump. Commissioner Crump? He seconded it before. I didn't hear that. He did. I'm going to accept that then. Um, any further comments? Could we have the roll call vote, please? Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Crump? He's muted. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Morris? I'm going to say yes. You know, the McFarland's our, our neighbor there, and I, I really want them to see them grow. I know they've had uh, a lot of difficult. Um, uh, difficulties in their in their community and their city and I hope uh, that they can you know straighten or get that you know uh, in, in place and, and go on and uh, but uh, I really Aye. 
I'm going to have to vote no, but I would have compromised uh, because I think the two farmers here uh, made a good case for their developments. But for the whole uh, 2,100 acres, um, still have to vote no. Um, six yeses, one no. Motion passes. Comment uh, to Mr. Knox. Cortese Knox Hertzberg gives us our marching orders. And I think you've gone to that document and done what it expects us to do. But as you said, we're hearing a personal side of the story that I thought was very compelling tonight. So I thank you people who came and made that case for us because it, it was very useful in making the decision. Okay. The, the, so first, now, the first word of LAFCO is local. That's right. We, which is why we're, we have a local, local commission here to do, do this work. Yes. So thank you all. Sure. Can Our, I say something? Yes. May I, my comments, Blair, I, I just wanted, I, we're not meant to be disparaging at all towards you. Um, and I appreciate the work that you did on this. And we, we and talked your, about this staff. going back a we couple did. years. Yes, we did. <laughs> thank you very much. All right. Shall we go ahead then um, with commission items? Commissioners, anything to present or report on or a question? Kind of a rookie question on commission items. Do we need to forward that ahead of time or can it be spontaneous? I believe it could be spontaneous. Be if it requires action, it would be nice to have notice. Be before you do that, let's bring uh, oh, the oh, attorney Mr. back. Mr. Schroeder. Attorney back. Mr. Schroeder. I think he went home. Why, why would I answer <laughs> that question when I have an attorney to answer it? <laughs> Come on in, Tom. Let the record show Mr. Schroeder's returned. Now, Commissioner Zaragoza, you had a question. Oh, sure. <clears throat> uh, the question I posed was on um, this agenda item, commission items, number eight came up. The question I had was, it, can it be spontaneous from a commissioner, or does he have to uh, forward that and, and make a record, give it to the uh, executive officer ahead of time? Can you explain to me what you're asking? Well, she asked a question, any commission items? And I'm, I'm asking, do I can I just talk and be spontaneous about that, and have a, have a discussion on that, or do I have to, as a topic, give that to the uh, staff ahead of time? I still don't understand what question. What's the background of the question? Well, she asked a question about commission. Sure, the chairperson asked a question. Right. About what? I just opened the discussion to any commission items. On, we're, we're, on commission <laughs> we're on commission, we're on commission oh, items yeah. now, yeah. and we don't have any yeah. current. He's asking if he can add them now. Does it have to be agendized, or can he just Because it says none right now, none on the agenda. Comments, there are certain things you can comment on that's not on the agenda. Uh, make a reference to staff, ask them to bring something. Okay, all right. Excuse me, your microphone's not on. Your, your microphone. microphone. You can, there are things you can ask. Uh, of staff, or make a reference to staff, ask them to bring something back, uh, a, a minor question about something, but no, you can't add anything to the agenda unless okay. unless it's uh, uh, something that, uh, uh, well, you, you really can't do it, and you, there are situations where it could happen, but not not this, not here. Okay, thanks for that, Mr. Schroeder. Yeah. No. Well, did you have anything? Um, Mr. Knox, you have something. I, I do have something, and this, this falls within um, Mr. Schroeder's category. Tonight is the last meeting for Commissioner Morris. Uh, after four long years, um, it doesn't seem that long. It doesn't seem that long. Uh, it seems like you, you just got here. And I know, just when I was getting the hang of it, right? <laughs> <laughs> And, and the way this works, um, the city representatives um, rotate every four years. There's a new uh, city, and uh, we will have Commissioner Ione on this next time. But for the last four years, you've been a, a wonderful 
Uh, commissioner, I've very much enjoyed working with you. Uh, I know other commissioners have as well, and we just yeah. want to say thank you uh, for being part of our little community here. Yeah. Well, I want to say thank you, too, to all of you for allowing me to be here and working with all of you. It really has been a pleasure, and I really have learned a lot. I remember the first day I came, and I didn't even know where I was supposed to sit, okay? I was sitting in the audience, and I said, oh, look, there's my name over there. <laughs> I think maybe that's where I'm supposed to be sitting. <laughs> so, yeah, it was, and, and, and I was so, wow, I said, this is really the big time, okay? We saw all those speakers and all the, you know, it was, it was really um, uh, 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 an eye-opener, you know, for me of, of, um, of you know, what uh, this commission was all about and the responsibility I had, you know, to it. So, uh, I... You know, I appreciate you, all of you, you know, and having the opportunity to work with all of you. And um, it's been a pleasure. So thank you so much. Thank you. And if I could add, as I hand you your plaque, um, in addition to all the good things you've done for LAFCO and for the communities in Kern County, your bright smile and happy attitude has been such a pleasure. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you, Liz. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I hate to say it, but any other commission items? <laughs> I, <laughs> Do you have one, Ms. Commissioner Scribner? I don't. Pardon me. Oh. <laughs> I, I just, I was, I just wanted to make sure we didn't skip item nine. But you're, you're right on it. We're on it. And I just wanted to mention I'll miss all of you. So hopefully, yeah. Thank no. you. All right, we're on to general business. We need approval of the monthly expense list 22-03. We need a vote. I'll move approval. Second. Any questions or comments? Could we have that roll call vote, please? Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Crump? Yes. Yeah. Commissioner Crowler? Yay, yeah, yes. Commissioner McKinnon? Yes. Commissioner Scribner? Aye. Commissioner Zaragoza? Yes. All ayes, motion passes. Thank you. Now our executive officer, miscellaneous items. Thank you, Chair. Uh, two years ago, in April, this commission approved the formation of the Weldon Regional Water District. Between COVID, uh, a recall election of the governor, um, it has taken two years to get an election of the landowners of the district itself up and running, and it's currently uh, we're currently in, in, in an election for the, Weldon, for the Weldon Regional Water District. That ends on Friday. Um, it is a landowner district, so um, uh, we have had a situation where, because there's a lag between when the, we have to use the assessed uh, tax roll of the county because it's a landowner district and their votes are counted based on uh, the dollar value of their property. So if you have 300, if your property is worth $300,000 on the voter roll, you have 300,000 votes. If your neighbor has $500,000 property, they have 500,000 votes. That's how that works. But because there's a lag between um, the assessor's roll and today, there are folks that did not get um, ballots. Uh, we have, uh, along with the elections department, created a process where we are going to hold, open an, uh, a poll in the Weldon area on Friday for folks who did not get one, that they could get a provisional ballot, and anyone who had a ballot that was um, damaged or lost or whatever, they could get a provisional as well. Um, so we're, we're doing our best to make sure that we aren't disenfranchising. That's always one of those key words in, in elections. Uh, any voters that could possibly, um, that should be counted, but because the assessor role does have that lag, um, we're not included. Uh, and so next next meeting, I will share with you the results of, of that election. Um, we're also running an election, another election through our office, and that is for the special district appointment. Uh, on LAFCO. Uh, Karen Sanders' uh, four-year term is up. Uh, we have four people running. Um, there are 85 
special districts, independent special districts that, that our LAFCO is the principal on. So there's 85 uh, potential voters. In order for the election to be um, legitimate, there has to be a quorum of those. So I need 43 votes. I'm currently 14 votes short of, of getting the quorum. So I've been pounding the, pounding the pavement a little bit, um, trying to get those last 14. If we don't get them by Saturday, uh, I do have the authority to ext extend the election for another 30 days. Um, but we're going to try not to do that. And I threatened that I would be calling them and pestering them for a whole month if they didn't get their ballot in now. So uh, I don't really have a carrot. All I have is a stick to say I'm going to be annoying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> So um, we're hoping to have that uh, election finished and that person seated um, at, the, at, the, at the May meeting. Um, I should say there's four people running, including Karen Sanders for, an, for the, another term. We are continuing to work on sphere of influence reviews. These are the five-year reviews we do for um, all the cities and special districts. Um, some of the cities who have current MSRs really don't, didn't have to do it because they, we already have all the information, uh, but we will we'll be bringing those back to you um, pretty soon uh, for you to ratify. We basically ratify their spheres again uh, for those that say that they don't need a sphere change. And if they do need one, we go through the process of like we would a normal sphere of influence uh, on your on your on your agenda like we normally do. Uh, several months ago, I brought to the commission the fact that we do not have a second attorney to back up Mr. Schroeder when he is not available to us. Either he's not here or has to recuse himself. Our previous um, backup attorney is the attorney for um, uh, West Side Water District, who is in the, who was suing us, so he asked me if um, there was going to be any changes into our relationship, and I said, "Well, the, not between LAFCO and the district, but you can't be my backup attorney while you're suing me." <laughs> um, and he got a good laugh out of that as well. Um, Commissioner Scribner mentioned um, the possibility of using county council. Uh, we have, I've gone back and forth with County Council for several months and we cannot come to an, an, an agreement. Uh, the issue is um, liability insurance. Um, you don't want to hear the whole story. Okay. So at this point, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, it's, it's not going anywhere. Um, I am uncomfortable having a commission meeting like we had tonight without Mr. Schroeder here or legal counsel because it is a contentious issue, um, I, I'm more comfortable to have one. So I'm, my plan is to put out an RFP to local attorneys that have experience in LAFCO, special district, city uh, type work. And um, we will be bringing that to the commission for your consideration. Madam Chair. Mr. Couch, go ahead. I hesitate to, to ask you this, but would you like would you like if Commissioner Scrivener and I talk to our county council? Or, we, or would, has that ship sailed and you don't want to have anything to do with that? We've been going back. The, the main, the main I, don't, I mean, I really don't understand the liability insurance issue for an attorney to attend our meeting. Can, it's, you, it's, can you explain it to it's me? It's your county council's requirement. At first, they asked us to provide the insurance. Is that because we're meeting here and not in our building? No. It has to do with their opinions and whether I guess they would get sued as well on opinions they gave to LAFCO. I don't know. I'm not exactly sure how you that, mean how on that a, works. If, but if typically we're the app, applicants indemnify LAFCO, right? Correct. And they think that wouldn't apply to the county? You can't explain it. I, I can't explain I it. it. Okay. They, they asked LAFCO to uh, look at getting that insurance I went to our insurer they said it would be about 10 grand a year I have not billed our backup attorney for five grand a year in the last five years 
So spending that kind of money for a backup attorney doesn't seem um, a good use of our, of our funds. A uh, private attorney will have their own insurance um, and it's built into the cost of, of their, their billing, their hourly billing. So um, at, that po at this point, I think that's the direction we need to go. Yes. Uh, Mr. Knox, I wonder if Attorney Schroeder has any thoughts. Well, I was never asked for liability insurance when I applied for this job. I bet you weren't. Uh, occasionally, a city will want you to have liability insurance. That, that, that's over and above the malpractice insurance that the lawyer will have himself or herself. Uh, the city wouldn't request that. Um, but it's just normal liability issues. Uh, you slander somebody and uh, while, while a, pub a public member and you get sued, um, just coming to work, coming to the meeting, you get in an accident and you get sued uh, and, and the, uh, the attorney gets sued and he's working, he and she or she is working for the commission when that happens. Um, so I, I can understand perhaps the, the county council, the county council wants us to buy them the liability insurance. Is that what you're saying? Well, that, that was the first step. And then they were going to look into whether they could include it into their, I guess, your self-insured and whether it could be included in that. And they never came up with an answer for me. And what? recently, I also, re I also rec realized looking through our journal vouchers that they've charged us $500 for their time working on this. What? Yeah. Well, they didn't have an agreement with you, though, did they? They did not. No. I could ask for that back, but I, I have to work with county council on uh, on other issues, so I'm, I, I'm I, uh, not pushing back very far. Commissioner I, Zaragoza. Yeah, I, when I was with the city, we, we, we do work with the superintendent of schools, and sometimes their attorneys would get involved, um, you know, special districts, whatnot. Mm -hmm. Do you think, this is a rookie question, you think they would be interested in responding to an RFP? I can always, I mean, yeah. I can send out the RFP, RFP to every attorney in All I know is that there's more than one attorney in or in Kern County. They're pretty, they're pretty uh, specialized. And, you know, I'll defer that to the uh, uh, Tom Schroeder, but it's just, just a thought because I could, I could add they're them. public and they might have a soft heart to work with LifeGo. Who knows? Other comments or questions? I had one more item, and that is, um, actually I had two. Yes, um, I'm not gonna do Lily now. Um, it's possible that Lily, Lily will be leaving us in the next couple of weeks, but there's also a possibility she's not. So we just found that out yesterday. So we're not, we're not sure exactly when her end date will be. Uh, uh, I also learned today that our cleaning company has terminated their contract with us. Um, they asked for a raise and I asked for an addendum to the contract we have with them because I have to bring it back to you. And for some reason, they don't want to do an addendum. They want me to do it. And I'm like, you want, do you want to be paid more and you want me to do the work <laughs> to, to ask for it? And I'm like, no. So You could charge them $500 for your yes, time. Yes, for my time for doing that. Um, so we're going to have to do an RFP for cleaning service again and bring back another contract for you for that. Uh, next month, I thought we would have four island annexations from the city of Bakersfield um, and two for the city of Delano. It appears now that uh, we will have one Delano annexation next month. Uh, the city of Bakersfield ones have a tax split negotiation issue that um, they're fine with the split with the county, but it hasn't gone before the city council yet. So we don't have it in our hands, so we can't move forward at this time. And there's more information we had um, for, this, for the Delano one. Um, they had to resubmit their application. There was some information that was incorrect on their application. So we're kind of having to start the clock over again on them. Um, so next meeting will be pretty light, but June will be pretty heavy. Uh, we meet. Um, I think it's June 24th or May 1st. Oh, I'm sorry, May 1st. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll meet on, May 25th, I think. May 
25th? May 25th is our next meeting. Um, and then we have June and then we're dark in July. So with that, I'm done with my comments. Thank you. So our next meeting will be May 25th. And this has been a slog, but the meeting is adjourned. <laughs>